with all due honor and praise to the Most High, and worship thee to the divine image of my wives. Amen. Welcome back to the Horseman Law Podcast. Um, we back at it finally. It's been a long time, and uh, I'm excited, and I'm happy to be here. I hope everybody's good. All my brothers out there in the field, I hope you're safe. Um, I hope you're not having any issues. I hope you're getting paid well, um, and I hope you're taking care of all your families and uh, doing what you're supposed to do. And uh, we're going to get this thing jumping. Um, my brother, my comrade, should be here shortly. Uh, we're going to have him in here, so that should be a, a real good um, you know, treat for you guys. Fresh off the field, uh, fresh off some details. So we're going to get into that. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, let me start by rest in peace, PNB Rock. Uh, good brother. Met him a few times uh, out of Philly. Um, and, and a terrible situation. And, and we'll talk about that later on in the show. And, and we'll talk about um, how to prevent things like that from happening. But um, rest in peace to him and his family. Uh, may Allah be, Allah be pleased with him, and um, hopefully uh, his family will be well taken care of in the future. And, um, yeah, terrible thing. A um, lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff has happened since we've been gone. We'll try to touch on a little bit of it. We'll try to get in uh, some details about the uh, tours that we just came, came off of you know, in regards to protection and what that means in the future, uh, in regards to other guys on tours and some of the things that are different now, um, B.C., than they were before. When I say B.C., I mean uh, before COVID. So um, some things have changed. Some protocols have changed. We'll try to get you guys in, in the know when it comes to stuff like that, traveling overseas, um, Traveling state to state, uh, armed, unarmed, um, you know, the best ways to do that and how to avoid any situations um, with the law. So we'll get into that, too. And um, we'll, we'll talk sports, too, man. We'll talk this uh, M.A. Adoko situation and, you know, how that pertains to the leagues and how that pertains to us as heterosexual uh, black males and what that means in the future, um, you know, and pertaining to how this man is being treated and how he's being uh, dragged through the media. And, and you don't really hear anything about the uh, the lady he was involved with and what that means and how that relationship works and how that uh, pertains to professionals um, on our level and other levels, you know. How do you protect yourself against um, things of that and how to use proper dick discipline so that you avoid um, your whole career being thrown away? So it's deep. It gets deep every day. And um, I want to start the show off by uh, discussing some, uh, some security issues that we're having, man. Um, I'm seeing a, a real um, terrible trend online, and I want to talk about it a little bit and discuss it. Um, you know, I, I hate to say, you know, we started some things, and, um, you know, we're the forebearers of some things, but, you know, you got to give credit when credit is due. And this whole idea of Instagram marketing and marketing yourselves as bodyguards, as protectors in the industry and using social media to do so. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to judge anybody about what they do and how they use it to market their business. If it works for you, it works for you. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But what I will say is it's starting to become um, 
is starting to become very Kardashian in these streets when it comes to this Instagram and, and uh, bodyguarding. It's getting really, it's getting really Kardashian-like in, uh, out here. So we're going to have to stop all that. You know, um, it's a field that, it's a career that I love. I love doing what I do. You know, I love being respected and, you know, appreciated as an OG in this business, which I am humbly, humbly accept that title. Um, there are OGs over me. There are people over me who in this business who taught me the business, who taught me how to do this. And, you know, a lot of those guys do not approve of social media, do not approve the use of social media in order to market yourselves or the business. And, you know, uh, the young comes in, they do things differently than the old. So we accept all that and we understand evolution and we understand how you change with the environment that you're presented and you change with the times. Understand that. But there is a thing of uh, devolving. You know, there's evolving and then there's devolving. And sadly, we're not looking like we're evolving as black men in this business. We're looking like we're devolving into something else, into... Uh, you know, soap opera, Hollywood, uh, you know, fuckery. And we're going to have to stop that. We're going to have to stop that. We're going to have to nip that in the bud right now. So anybody who's calling themselves a protector or a bodyguard or whatever name or label you want to give it in this business, understand that you carry a banner, especially as black men, and you represent all of us and if you misrepresent all of us, then you offend all of us. And, um, you know, with that offense, you have to answer and, and you will be questioned. So that being said, let's kind of rein it back a little bit. Let's kind of rein it back a little bit on the gram. And let's focus more on doing the business, on doing the job. And, you know, I don't mind you promoting yourself and promoting what you do and what you're good at. Let's stick to that, though. Let's not add anything else. And let's keep it clean. And let's, and let's remember, we already get a bad rap in this industry. We're already competing with mysteries and theories and stereotypes in this industry. Um, everybody thinks they can do what we do better than us until it comes down to it. So we need to show and improve. Um, you know, you have to fight the ideas that one, uh, the most successful of us don't need security, which is completely bogus. Two, that um, we're not professional enough to provide that service. And three, we're not good at it. All those are bogus. All those are uh, lies and untruths. And we prove that over and over and over again. Um, we've proven that through successful details. I mean, I can go through the gambit. I can go through the list. We'll be here all night. But successfully, you know, protecting clients. And uh, we want to change the culture. We want to change the idea of using uh, black protection as the preferred method of protection when it comes to hip hop, sports, and entertainment. Simple and plain. And the only reason why I say that is because I take pride in being uh, the best or one of the best in hip hop, sports, entertainment. That's my field, hip hop, sports, and entertainment. Okay. Um, I think Rox is here. We're going to get him on. But, yeah, I, I pride myself on that. I'm not here trying to be military or anything like that. Rocco. What's What's happening? Grab a seat. Grab a seat. Join the show. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. 
We got rocks in here. How's it going? How's it going? Yeah, grab the headphones to get you in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my my blood brother, my my, my Padawan, my uh, you know one of one of my one of my closest closest associates and family in this business. Uh, rocks on his way to being top five dead or alive in this business. Right. You know, so I was taught well. Yeah, I can't say I wasn't. So um, yeah, we're gonna chop it up. I was just talking to the people about um, cats on Instagram, you know, marketing and promoting and, you know, tastefully, doing it tastefully, doing it in a way that is respectable and honorable. Um, like I was just discussing, there's a lot of guys online right now, and it seems to be a lot of friction online. It seems to be a lot of bickering and some Kardashian-like behavior when it I comes mean, to the, the... That's the age we live in nowadays, you right, know what when, I mean? when Social it, when media it, shit. When it comes to bodyguard. But we got, we got to step out of that. You know? Facts. As black men in this business, we got to step out of that that idea and, and, and step into something more, more different. And like I was saying, I'm not saying you guys should lose your swag out there. I'm not, a, I'm not trying to de-swag y'all. You feel me? I don't want you out here trying to pretend to be a scarecrow. And when I say scare, when I say scarecrows, I mean, you know, put on a, a suit and a lapel pin, and and you know, pretend to be Secret Service, or pretend to be law enforcement, or pretend to be military. I'm not telling you to do that because I think that shit is trash. Because the simple fact that I'm not out here trying to be a cop, I'm not out there trying to be a Secret Service agent. You know, I'm not dabbling in their business, and I don't appreciate when they dabble in ours. Right. If you're going to do this the way we do, if you want to come into hip-hop, sports, and entertainment, learn our ways, learn how we've done it, and how it's been done for the past, you know, to my knowledge, 30 years, men like Killer J. Kane, who's been out here doing it for 25-plus years, taught me the game. If you're not doing it like that, then... You're going to have trouble with me uh, showing you the proper respect and honor, regardless of your background. So just touching on that, man, just touching on, you know, how to how to carry yourself out here in the field. Oh, it's very important because, you, you know, know, certain moves you make that we make as horsemen, it's it's calculated through mm -hmm. and through. It's, it's to the point where the moves are so calculated that you know what I'm going to do before I even do it. And that's the way it's supposed to be. It's like uh, the scene in uh, 300, the movie, when they were like, uh, you only are the strongest the man to your left and your right. At that point, that's 100% true with us. You know what I mean? Like, when you go into the situation, if I have another horseman on my six, I'm not worried at all. There's been mm -hmm. times I've been in other situations working with other parties that were not, were not horsemen associated. But, you know, we had to work together as mm -hmm. is and uh, just fell short, just mm -hmm. fell short completely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as a horseman, you know, we know, we taught to speak up and speak out. You don't see something wrong. I don't care what it is. Something unsafe. Mm -hmm. Got to let it be known. Because mm -hmm. at that day, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it falls on you. You know what I mean? So as a horseman, as I sit there and watch other security guards, bodyguards, protecting agencies, whatever you want to call yourself, be at a multi-million dollar artist show and you have your phone out recording mm. recording mm. like you doing mm -hmm. where's your job at at that point you watching your phone you never mm -hmm. you, you're not you're not you're not doing your job so mm -hmm. that's that's my thing that's one of my biggest pet peeves in this industry when i see somebody pull their phone out technically i want to just walk up to people and snap them but i understand you know we can't do everything the horseman way well you know, this is this is one of the things we're talking about earlier, you know, the social media era. Right? Yes. When you're working, is not the time to get content. Yeah, you're not on your time. Right. This ain't the time for you to be trying to create content and post content while you're on the job. Now, people may say, well, you know, horseman fan and this, that, and yeah. You got to understand, horseman fan, the material and the content that is on that page 
is content that is pulled off the internet. Facts. None of the content that is on Horseman Fan is from us individuals. We're not gathering. We're not. We're not creating the content. Yes, content. we don't have cameramen. We right. don't have situations right. where we are being secretly filmed or exactly. trying to exactly. get a, a spot to post on exactly. social media. No, exactly. not so, at all. So the content that you see on Horseman Fan is content that's created by others, that is posted online, and then it is pulled from online and reposted on the page. Facts. So um, that's the difference that we're starting to see. We're starting to see uh, bodyguards out here. I'm not going to name any names. I'm not going to name any specific companies who are actually bringing cameramen with them, who are actually trying to create content while they're doing their job. And that's, unsafe. And that's a no-no. That's it's, a no-no. It's just unsafe. It's, yeah. it's, it's not that it's just unethical. It's just unsafe. The fact that you're worrying about how you look on camera to post on your social media page or however you want to slice it or whatever video photographer you got following you around just don't make no sense to me. Right. Because then at that point, how are you doing your job? If you're worrying about how you look, mm -hmm. how are you doing your job? Absolutely. And that's one thing I learned straight up as a horseman. We stay in the trenches. Mm -hmm. We get comfortable in the trenches. It's like, yo, if 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 you're not okay, we're not we're going 14 hours without using the bathroom, without eating, without drinking, and still being able to be on your shit, then the horseman ain't for you. And that's Absolutely. what it is. That, that right there, let alone, separates us from... The mom and pop spots. Absolutely. And you got to understand, you know, uh, it's long hours. It's, it's, it's no rest. It's no sleep. You know, it's a, it's a grueling schedule at times. It's a, at times, it's, it's a grueling schedule. And if you're not eating properly, if you're not taking care of yourself properly, if you're not training and you're not exercising, uh, a lot of dudes ain't going to make it, man. So yeah. Physically. It just yeah, drains physically. you. It just takes it to the point where you're getting maybe two hours of good sleep. And I say good sleep where your phone doesn't ring, where you don't have something back home hitting you to take care of something else mm -hmm. because you we do multiple things that we got going on. You know what I mean? So it's just. And, and, and we've lost a lot of guys in the field, man. There's a lot of guys we've lost to blood clots and, you know, heart yes. attacks and, and, you know, things of that nature. And that's because the schedule. That's because of the schedule. If you're not, if you're not resting, you're not getting any sleep, you're not eating properly, and you're still drinking, smoking, and doing whatever, that shit will catch up to you in the field. You know, you're hopping on flights that are 14 hours, 15 hours, you're flying over to Dubai, you're flying to London, you're flying to all these places, you're not getting any blood circulation. That shit will catch up to you. And a lot of times, you know, you don't get to eat the way you would normally eat at home, like, you know? Mm -hmm. At home, I'm on a strict diet. I normally try to watch what I eat. But on the road, anything goes. Anything goes. <laughs> anything now, now, see, now that anything not, goes not, for you. I mean, yes. Not within reason, obviously. Right, right. But I'm, I'm not. You know. You already know. I'm and, a fat kid at heart. Yeah. And, and that's a, you know, that's one of the keys that I learned early. You know, uh, we ate separately, um, you know. I'm not, you know, I don't talk to people, period, but <laughs> we, we don't, we don't really associate <laughs> with, with, uh, with clients and, and we don't really do all that buddy you know, guard, buddy guard and shit. Yeah. We don't do that shit. So, you know, it's difficult. It's difficult at times. Sometimes we you used to go days. Um, I was with Floyd for a while and I never spoke to him. Um, uh, I was with Wayne, never spoke to him. Um, Several clients who I never spoke to, but um, the tier, the tier protection system that horsemen created and, and that horsemen do, the tier protection system only means that every client, every principal has a principal uh, main man who's responsible for protecting that client. Right. Now, when you're on a multiple detail with multiple dudes, it is not everybody's responsibility to protect the main principal. Facts. See, in the horseman tier protection system, 
whoever the next man is, is responsible for the next man. Right. So when you're on a multiple man detail and you've got six guys, eight guys, three guys, four guys, when you're on these details, you always see the same bullshit. See them tripping over their yeah. feet and everyone want to hop in line. Everyone bunched up, first and, in line. you know, nobody's yeah. moving yeah. in order. That's because everybody's he trying to, to be protect. next to the guy. Everybody wants everybody to be, wants next, be to next to the bag. That shit don't make no sense. Don't make none. See, that's why when we work together and when we was out there, you see how I do. It's purposely. You know, everything is for a reason. Facts. You know, I'm standoffish. I'm abrasive. I'm aggressive. That's because my responsibility ain't the principal. Facts. You got that. Facts. I, you, he, I ain't got to worry about him because you got him. I got to worry about you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? My protection, I got to protect you. So even when I was on details with Killer J, he's got the print. I ain't got to worry about Facts. I ain't got to worry about Floyd. I ain't got to worry about, you know, Wayne or whoever else that we with. I ain't got to worry about that because he got him. Through and through. My job is to get him. My job is to get Killer J. Right? And if there's another man, his job is to protect me. Right. See, just keep going. And keep going. Now, that, that tier system, it alleviates the idea of everybody trying to get close to the principal. It kills the idea of everybody not moving synchronized, not moving in the proper order. Yes. So, and that's just a small tidbit for those in the business. There's, there's so much more to learn being a horseman that separates you from everybody else. Now, trust and believe after this goes out, everybody going to try to oh, move like that. Of course. Everybody they, gonna but as to. they should. I mean, that is the safest way to do it. Like, I'm going to give you a scenario. I'm not going to use no names, obviously. But uh, I was in a casino with a client, and a crazy fan tried to hop in front of us and stop us, stop the motorcade from moving. I, just, I pretty much got to the, the individual that was trying to stop us, and allowed the rest of the team to move forward because I wasn't on the principal. I wasn't on the bag. My job was to make sure the bag doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, that's what you got to do. It's not about, oh, I'm next to the person so I can get that social media shit, so I can get a picture, so I can be in the picture. Mm -hmm. so I can, mm -hmm. If you notice a lot of times when I am in the picture and I know I am, I put my head down. Mm -hmm. That way I don't want to be seen. Mm -hmm. What's the point? What's the point of being seen when I work in the shadows anyway? That's where we at. That's where we stay comfortable. I don't, I don't, I'm not here to socialize. I'm not here to be friends with the people I protect. No, my job is to protect you. Mm -hmm. And I do my job well. Mm. And that is why I represent the horsemen the way I do, because I have worked with many organizations, some that are horsemen affiliated and some that are not. And the ones that I guarantee that are not, I will never work with them again. Just yeah. because of the fact that it's dangerous. And at the end of the day, my job is to come home. Yeah. I don't care how many people I got to run through. How many people I got to step on? How many people? Doesn't matter. I'm making it home. Exactly, and and that's the whole that's the whole purpose, man. That's the that's the idea of this podcast, and that's the idea of the show. Is I'm not trying to hoard the information. You know, facts. A lot of dudes aren't good enough. I'm gonna just keep it a buck. You're not good enough, so you got to hoard the clients. Yes. You got to hoard the opportunities. You got to hoard the information because you don't want nobody to come in and overstep you or take your spot. As a horseman, I'm secure in my ability and my talents and gifts that I give you the information. Fuck. Right? I give you the knowledge because I want you to be just as good, if not better. I want you to be able to represent us as a people in this business. See, because what you don't understand and what a lot of dudes out there don't understand, every time we lose one in this business, it does not reflect on the industry. See, every time we, use, we lose a black man in the business, in hip-hop, sports, and entertainment, every time we lose one, it's a black eye on the black men who are protectors yes. in this business. Yes. It does not, it does not go on the record. Whether whether or not we were there, 
whether or not, you know, they were moving like they weren't supposed to, whether, whether or not they was making mistakes, it does not matter. Because in the world, it's a black eye to us yes. in this business because we lost one. They're not looking at the military. Yeah, they're not looking at right. they're not looking at Russian spetsnaz. If anything, they're saying you should have hired cops. Exactly. And at that point, I done been in a situation with the police in the trenches and they shook. Exactly. And that's why I'm not gonna say all cops do this, but very much of them don't have real life training. Yes, they have school training, which is important as well. But real life training, when you grow up in a certain scenario situation, it breeds you for this shit. But but it's not it's it's, it's greater than that though. Yeah, fact. right. Because that's just the start. Right. It's greater than that because there's so many things that go into doing what we do and what we do well. Relationships. It's knowing the neighborhoods. It's knowing yeah. the people. It's, it's being here being respected, people knowing where you came from, people know who you who you who you went with, who you work with, and it's vetting. The reason why horsemen can get so many gigs and the reason why we get so many jobs and the reason why we're respected in this industry the way that we are. The vetting the vetting process Right? We're not just giving cats t shirts to come out and feel. You're talking about dudes who have been with us, who have worked with us for years. Yes. Shout out OG Twin. Shout out uh, uh, Jamaica. Shout out all these cats Jamaica. who have been in the business right. for years. Right? You're talking about, you're talking about guys like Twin, who's been with Genuine since before I even thought about doing this. You understand what I'm saying? These are people who have been holding down this industry. G Unit, Fifty Cent, uh, Dre, Snoop. I mean, you go through eras in this business, and you're talking about the same men who have been there behind the scenes. Now, when you're talking like that, can't no dude with a badge walk in and get that kind of love and respect. Ain't gonna never happen. I don't care what his badge look like. Even then, it might even be the opposite because you're trying to pull shit off of people that don't respect you. Or don't, right, you right. haven't earned it. You know what I mean? Right. At that point, that's one of my things too. When I when I have to ever address a situation, I always leave with respect first. Until that person disrespects me, then at that point I take it to your level. Right. And even then, it's within reason. And, and and even then, it's an idea of is it worth yes, that's what I said, is it worth reason. it? What, what's the priority, right? What's the priority? Now I'm not going to lie. When I first started, in this industry, it was it was gladiator games out there. It was gladiator school. It was gladiator school. Cheers. It was gladiator school. Every night. Every night. You know what I'm saying? Are you not entertained? Yeah, you come home fucked up, bruised up, scratched up, cut up. And you still come home like that every now and then. But it's not it, it's not a, it's not as simple as it was back then when you can just get down with a cat and you know if you make it home that night it's bygones bygones yeah, facts. listen I, I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it 1000 you put your hands on somebody in this industry in today's time kill him and and that's some, I'm gonna keep it 1000 that's the way I look at it if I have to put my hands on you I am going to attempt to take your life because that's how I'm receiving it. It's the only way I can make it home. Right. I'm receiving anybody who's dumb enough to put their hands on me as a direct threat to my life. It's just that's where we are today. So that's why all the, the information is necessary. That's why all the preparation is necessary. That's why all the knowledge is necessary. So you never get to the point where somebody puts their hands on you or you put your hands on somebody. That's the goal, ladies and gentlemen. That's the goal in this business. If you are a black male bodyguard or female working in hip-hop, sports, and entertainment, the goal is to never have to put your hands on somebody or then put their hands on you. That's the goal. That's the job. That's the job. And if it does get to that point, End it quick. End it. End it quick so you can go home. Right? And that's the truth. So you look at, 
and we'll get in, we're going to get into P and B, P and B Rock, uh, the brother who lost his life tragically in L.A., a place where I'm from. I was born and raised South Central Los Angeles, Third Avenue, right? That's right around the corner from Van Ness Park. Understand something. Everybody's trying to say, well, you know, L.A. is particularly different and gang culture, this, that, and the other. Listen, I don't care where you go in this country. If you go into the neighborhoods where poverty is as rampant as it is in some of these states, Philadelphia, New Orleans, New York City, um, Chicago, Miami, any of the areas where the poorest of the poor reside, if you go in there walking around with hundreds of thousand dollars in jewelry, somebody's going to try to take it. I tell clients all the time, when you wake up, when you wake up and you in your house and you decide you're about to step out in the streets, right? There's a there's a protocol. You know, you get your watch, your chain, you lay it out, got your outfit, boom. You put on your clothes, you 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 snap on your chains. You should be calling a horseman. That should be a part of your protocol if you're going to leave the house. If you're going to leave the house with the jewelry, you should be calling a horseman. Facts. Facts. If you're not, if, if, if you're going to leave the house. the end result with that. The end result of I'm Speaking you, to the mic. The, mic. The, the end result of you leaving your house without security. And I'm, he, he's saying horseman. I'm just saying security protection, period. Nah, nah. No, because nah, listen, nah, I mean, I understand. It, it, yes, I, I get what you're saying. A hundred percent. You may not, you you may not get the best of the best because technically you may not be able to afford it. You know, you spent it all on that chain. But leave with somebody. That way, it's a buffer between you and the public. That's what you don't understand. And, and, and let me tell you why I don't say somebody. Let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you why I say a horseman. I mean, fact. Let me, let me tell you why I say a horseman. I would hire a horseman. Let me tell you why. Because. When you went and got that chain from that jeweler, mm -hmm. right, and he told you these are uh, such and such diamonds from such and such and blah, 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 blah. You know what you said? I yeah. cool. Bet. Here's the money. I don't have no sympathy for you willing to spend that kind of money on the chain based on the word of this guy who calls himself a jeweler. That. And then you telling me, oh, well, you know, I, 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 I can't afford a horseman. Or why well, use a horseman? I can use this other guy. No, 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 no. If you're not cutting no corners with your jewelry, because I'd have been all around Facts. the industry. You don't want that diamond tester coming around. And right. I'd have been all beat. around the industry. <laughs> and that shit don't now, beat. <laughs> now, if you're wearing, if you wearing fake stuff and you're willing to take that risk because you ain't got no money, more power to you, Facts. man. Live on the wild side. But if you're one of these people that I know who spends hundreds of thousands of dollars on jewelry, and then you tell me with a straight face, you can't afford men who can get you out of these, of these places. And make no mistake about it. Only horsemen can walk you into certain places and walk you out. Say that shit again, though. That's just, a, that's nah, just what real shit. all over the world. It don't matter where we at. It don't All matter. over the world. It don't matter. Africa. It don't matter. France. It don't matter. London. It don't matter. Australia. It don't, don't matter. It don't matter. Only a horseman can walk you in and walk you out of these places like that. And make it look easy though. Now, now you can you can you can fool yourself. You can fool yourself and say, okay, cool. I can use this. I can use this guy. I can use that guy. I'm strapped. I could use the homie. I could do this. You can make any excuse that you want. But I'm going to just keep the buck with you. If you got your homeboy from the neighborhood, or you got your dude who's a shooter, or whatever the case may be, from the block that you from, from wherever that you from, I get it. I understand. You want to get your man a job. You want to get him working. 
I've said it before on this podcast. I say it again. I'm not hoarding information. Killer J's not hoarding information. Horsemen are not hoarding the knowledge. If you want your dude trained up and ready to protect you like you deserve, like that chain requires, call a horseman. That's why I said call a horseman. Now, when you put, that it, when that you put it like mean, that, it makes sense. That don't mean that I don't was, mean you got to have one. Yes. But yes. call one. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Because a call can come in and we can say, hey, look. Before you decide to do that, you just bought you a half a million dollar chain. You just bought a half a million dollar watch. Before you start to make those moves, fly me out, pay me correctly, let me train your people to move you properly Yes. before you start moving with that. Because even in that situation, if you put yourself around people that are not trained and you are in that situation working... Where the, the homie has a pistol and so on and so forth. That could be a bad situation as well, because now you got shooters that may react to a situation what? that you may not even want to shoot at. So at that point now you want to shoot out based off of someone else's entourage because they homie don't know what they're doing. What I tell you in the field. A lot. <laughs> God talks to everybody. God talks to all of us. The Most High talks to all of us. And sometimes he'll give you a warning shot. Literally. You, you better me? listen. You better listen because it's not that warning sometimes, shot going to get your ass hit next time. Sometimes God will give you a warning shot. Not every shooter knows what he's doing. Not every man with a gun needs to have one. I've seen it over and over and over again. Just because you have a gun means absolutely nothing if you don't know how to use it. Facts. If you don't know how to carry it, you don't know how to use it, you don't know how to how to uh, how to defend your life or others with it, it's worthless. It's a paperweight. If anything, you're going to end up shooting yourself or you're going to end up shooting somebody close to you. I'm going to tell you guys something, and this is for all the dudes who follow us and who are online. I'm going to tell you something that you don't know. Now, we might talk about, you know, police doing business. I know a lot of cops who do good business, who have respect for the industry, who has respect for us, Thanks. and they come in, and, they, and, and, and I use them often, Thanks. but they have respect, and we share information. A lot of these guys being killed out here, they're not dying because of ops. I'm going to say this one more time. A lot of the dudes who are losing their lives in the industry right now, mm. a lot of the street guys, the rapper guys, the guys who are dying daily in this business are not being killed by ops. They are being killed by misfires. They are being killed by friendly fire they are being killed by the homies who don't know what they're doing that part. listen to me carefully there most of the dudes who are losing their lives in this industry they i know the media is portraying like these are ops and they were a lot of these dudes are losing their lives to friendly fire in shootouts with people who don't know what they're doing Babies with guns. Mm. Dangerous. See, they're not going to tell you all that. Why? Because that could change prosecution. That could change some of these, some of these, uh, you know, murder, murder cases and murder one cases and, you know, criminal cases. That can start to change the criminal aspect of the industry. So they're not going to report it as friendly fire, as a misfire, as an accidental shooting. All these shootings in Chicago, Atlanta, L.A., all over the place, all of these are just murders, right? Everybody's John Wick out in this motherfucker, right? Good movie. 
Come on, man. Wise up. Start listening. Start thinking. Not everybody with a pistol knows what they're doing. Not everybody with a pistol knows how to carry it. And not even that. If you're carrying a gun, like that should be a line, last line of defense. First and foremost, understand that. If a, if a firearm doesn't come out or you're not like in real danger for your life, no one should ever know that you have a firearm. So therefore, like the whole idea of getting in an argument with someone and pulling out a gun, what it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all because at that point, where are you going with that? Now, if a gun comes out, by all means, like I said before, my job is to make it home and then make sure everybody that came with me leaves home as well. And that right there is the horseman law. Like, that's just 101. Got to get home. Got to. Home is a must. I can't die nobody. I can't die nowhere else but home. Facts. Pure point blank. I can't die nowhere else but home. I refuse to. You so, catch me the VIP strip club, maybe. And I'll take that <laughs> one. <laughs> I got to get to the house. I got to get to the crib. There's no, there's no getting away, getting around it. And these cats out here will make it hard for you. I'm not talking about the dudes in the street. I'm talking about the dudes you're rolling Man, with. That part. You understand? I'm talking about the cats that are in the same vehicle with you. You know, there are certain standards and protocols that um, I pride myself on enforcing around me. And it's real simple. If, if you don't want them fucking standards and protocols, don't use me. Because I'm not risking anything for foolishness. Yeah, because not even that. You, you, let's say someone in your entourage is an ex-criminal sitting on F, got felonies, and they decide while they're hanging out with you, it's not safe because of the beef they got on the street and they bring a pistol. Automatically, that's just all bad. Everybody around that person is going to jail if the cops happen to pull up and do a search. Everybody. Because you got a felon with the firearm. Mm -hmm. At that point, it doesn't matter what credentials you have, it doesn't matter who you know. Mm -mm. Well, it might, depending on the situation, but nonetheless, it's all bad. Like, it, it doesn't end well for most people. And in this situation, when you are on a chopping block, your client gets to walk away. Know mm -hmm. that. Your client will walk away and not look back. It's nothing <laughs> personal. It's nothing personal. Like, don't, don't expect them to be like, oh, yeah, he's with me. Bring him with me. No, they will keep moving and hire the next and hire the next, and hire the next. That's one thing as a horseman I've learned early in from this man right here. No job is ever my last. No. It's not. So, therefore, to hold any, any client, like you're the, the pot of gold at the end of my rainbow doesn't make any sense because I know, I know what to do, and I know how it, how it is. It's never personal. And when you hire a horseman, you get the protection of a horseman, and when you don't, you don't, and that's that simple. It, 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 and let me tell you something, man. And I said it before on this podcast. I said it again. Um, one day, a dude I was working with, and I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say his name, but you know, the worst thing I ever heard a man say is that another man was gonna take care of him for the rest of his life. <laughs> now, I don't care what the circumstance is, unless your name is Thomas Ware Senior. Can't no man ever, 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 ever uh, take care of me for the rest of my life. This is just not, that's not, that's not possible. Now, don't get me wrong. Let me ask you this. Let me cut you off. Yeah. Is that man, because I know exactly what you're talking about. Is that man in that same business situation that he's being taken care of right now? Not, not, not at all. <laughs> not at all, right? Not that, at all. That's what I'm saying. That man yeah. believed at that moment believed when he said that, that shit, yeah. that it was it was gospel. He yeah, believed. He thought, yeah. That he was going to be taken care of forever. And he's probably sitting at home on his couch right now watching this. Right. Mad at the world. Eating. Right? Now, I'm not saying you won't. I'm not saying in this business you don't have mentors. You don't have men who, you know, Killer J. Kane has always made sure I was good. Back. And made sure I had work. But, you know, with me, it's always eat what you kill. Yep. You understand what I'm saying? It's always eat what you kill. I'm not going to take food off another man's plate unless I'm providing it. If he got some food, I got some food, and we eat down and we sit down and eat together, he might have more than me. I might have less than him. He might say, you know what? I don't want the rest of this. You want the rest of it? It's a sharing situation. 
right? But I'm not going to allow myself to be in a situation where somebody's feeding me and I'm not in a position to help or to feed myself. That's just that's just cold. That's just man cold. Right. You understand what I'm saying? I don't mind taking care of the men around me. But when they provide good work, when they represent properly, when they go out and carry the name forward, then we're feeding off each other, right? It's a because brand base, name. base, base, yeah, exactly. It's a brand name. It ain't about me. It ain't about him. It's about the horseman. Now, so when I step out the house, that's what I represent. And at that point, I would never have Tank, Killer J, Smitty, anybody else, Lamont, call me out on some flagrant shit as far as me not doing my job as a horseman. Never will happen. And that's the cold because everybody's eating off each other. Thanks. The more good work you do, the more good work others do, the more the name grows, and the more we ca- we get to carry on with the reputation that's pristine and, and, and untouched in this industry. And we continue to do so. You know, uh, getting back to the getting back to the brother. When you move in the streets, right? When you're moving, right? And we talk about this a lot. And in an industry you know and I know about posting where you're at. Man. Right. You, you you never post where you're at. You post where you've been. That part. Right? You should, never post where you are. You post where you was. Should never look like you on vacation right. at the time. But but not call. even not even for us. Just for regular people. Man. Just just something to take with you. If you're not a bodyguard and you're an artist or you're coming up in this business or, you know, not even that, just as a general general rule. Safety rule. Like safety you gotta think rule. about this. If you post something on social media, let's say you got a thousand followers. Out of those thousand feet people that follow you, maybe know a handful, let's say fifty, close down to twenty, right? So you post that online that you out out of town for the week. Who knows if these people were able to find your IP address? It's the internet. It's two thousand and twenty two, dog. This shit ain't hard. Right. So at that point now they know you've gone for a week in wherever island or tropical spot or wherever the fuck you at. And then at that point, it's food. Right, right. Anytime you put food in a person in front of a person that's starving, they will try to eat it, no matter what it is. Mm-hmm. Know that. Mm-hmm. So protect yourself. If you want to post, I'm not saying don't post shit. Post it a week after. Post it when you're on your way home. Make it seem like motherfuckers, like you just left when you're on your way back. Or... Don't post it at all. Live life. You know what I mean? Right. Shit don't got to be on social media for it to be real. That's a fact. That's an absolute fact. And 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 in the business, even if you're not in the business, even if you're just, you know, a regular Joe, regular Schmo, you know, the way they're making these phones and the way they're making the game, they're making it almost impossible not to be tracked. Um, and you're going to have to take effort to keep yourself from being traceable. That's the way they want it. They want it to where it's, you're going to have to put some kind of effort in to keep yourself from being tracked. Because if it's just left to your own devices, if it's just left to just your common movement, you're being tracked and traced. These Instagrams and these social medias, this Facebook, all of that shit is tracking you at all times. And regardless of who you are, if somebody has any kind of basic information, they can trace you and track you. Right? right? So, easily. Very right? easily. So if your girl can track you, <laughs> the hitters can track you. Best believe. If your girl can find out where you're at, the hitters can find out where you're at it. At the same time. So that's why I say it's, it's important to uh, have protection. Hey, listen. I'm, I'm well off. I don't move without protection. And I protect. Right. And I don't move without protection. And I don't wear hundreds of thousands of dollars and chains and jewelry and this, that, and the other. So uh, Killer J doesn't move without protection. Horsemen don't move without being protected. So. If you're out there and you have any kind of status or any kind of jewelry, the moral of the story is when you put on your chain and your watch at the same time, you should be preparing yourself to make that phone call to us to get you some proper protection. Very true. All right? Because the last thing you want is you not to make that phone call and, you know, God forbid something happened. 
And I'm not even talking about you getting killed to the point. Just even robbed. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people never had a gun in their face. So you don't even know what it's like. And I don't recommend it. You know what I mean? So it's just that scenario. If you can avoid it, do so. Mm-hmm. Why not? We're going um, we to get Killer J on the horn in a minute. You got that number? Okay. Killer J. We're going to get him on in probably about five, ten minutes. That's my man. Killer yeah. J, man. There's no like, there's no, no no one other like him, man. Yeah, out Killer in J. the field. Out in the field, busting it open. You know what I'm saying? Out there doing it. And... um. Another thing I want to talk about tonight, too, man. We're going to talk about this M.A. Adoke, Adoku shit. <sighs> Throwing it all away for a piece of ass. Throwing it mm. all away for a piece of ass. Now, mm. it, it's a damn shame because, you know, the man took the Boston Celtics to the playoffs, to the finals last year. It was talks of him being the coach of the year, you know, uh, of course, he's in a relationship with Nia Long, uh, yeah. fiance, looking forward to marriage, and it's all gone. Just like that. Just like that. It's Just all gone. Like that. It's all gone. Now, dick discipline in this business is a must, and Very true. you know, um, there's a lot of dudes who are falling from lack of, and. It's a goddamn shame. I, I say it. No, but you gotta understand a lot of lot of people get into this industry with the hope of finding pussy. Which is which is just all bad in a sense to begin with, first and foremost. If you step into this industry and your number one goal is not to be the best at what you do, which is protection, don't even do it. I, it, it it's something deeper than that though. Um, a lot of these dudes just never really got any. That's what I'm saying. So they, a, a, lot, a lot of I'm, let's keep it a buck, man. A man. lot of these dudes never really had women. They didn't really get pussy when they was young. They didn't get it throughout high school, and and the moment they got into some type of status, power, some type of position, they lose their fucking minds. They lose they lose their fucking minds, and they throw it all away. At the opportunity. Yeah. You know, and I feel for y'all. <laughs> I feel, I, I really do. <laughs> I feel for you, motherfucker. I'm, I'm, all the, I'm talking to rappers, right. ball players, fighters. I feel for you, motherfucker, because I see you all the time, man. And it's a damn shame. It's like you never got none until, you know, you got some money. And some opportunity, and and I and I'll be wishing for y'all. Wish I could just go back to the younger you and be like, "Hey, look, man." You nah, know? they gotta learn though, man. Jesus. They, they gotta learn because they. You gotta understand these holes is out there with a purpose as well, and I don't mean it with no disrespect. Maybe a little bit, but not too much. But they out here with a purpose. They out here, and soon as they soon as you they cut that check to you, you think they ain't online searching you up looking for you. Seeing that you got a half a million dollars chain around your neck, mm. like come on now, and they they running around here just waiting, just waiting, Wait. hoping they, they can get you to slip up and either have one of their homies ride up and take your shit, or okay, cool, have uh, have it to the point where you know you fuck around and you in a situation where you got to take care of someone for the next 15, 18 years. Bet okay, let's try to give him a call, see if he. Don't. Let's see, let's see what Killer J got to say about it. I'm sure he got some wise words. Wisdom. Please leave your message for five, seven. All right, we'll try him back in a minute. We'll try him back in a minute. But, yeah, you know, the sad part about it is that, you know, they're not mentioning the female he was messing with, and that's all a part of the game. You got to know that. She's she was definitely probably a wife or some higher up right. in the you know in the organization, and 
they not gonna never they they not gonna never put it on front street. Um, according to my knowledge and what I know, uh, you know, this was all found out from a private investigator, the husband of the female he was messing with, hired one, and um, was able to get in Doku's. Uh, information. Well, he knew who he was, but he was able to figure it out and, and um, red handed, my nigga. Yeah. Red handed. Ain't nothing you could do with At that eating. point, yeah. But even then, like, like you said, you had everything before that and you threw it away for some coaching, for some no, pussy. But understand, I get it. I don't. You on the road? I don't, though. Yeah, see, but you got you to gotta do other things, man. You got to come up with something, my G. You got to, listen, you got to come up with something, man. You got to come up with something. There's long nights on the road, you know. Yeah, but even with that, if you Call have from. a, if you have, Jay. there you go. To there we go. press one. To send a voicemail, press. Jay. What's going, brother? How you doing? What's good, baby? What's happening? Oh, man, just grinding. I got rocks over here, too, baby. What up? What you killer, Jay? What up, brother? Everything good? Yeah, everything is swell, man. How you doing? Good. Well, Brock, I rock 7K. Congratulations on the successful uh, promo tour you did with NAF. Congratulations. Good job, brother. Appreciate you always. You shouldn't expect nothing less. Yeah, man. Hell That's yeah. That's a good thing. Where you at? You in the field? Yeah, I'm in the field, yeah. I'm going to say shout out to my boy John Hill. I hope you feel better. He's okay. feeling a little sick today. Bet, bet, bet. Uh, you, 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 Iron Man, you know he's going to get it. Yeah, Superman be doing his thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, thank man. It's, it seems like everything we talk about, brother, Comes to light. We've been telling these gentlemen out here, man, get security, mm -hmm. get proper security, yep. and first of all, move accordingly to the situation. Absolutely. Know the land. Know the land. Know the land. That's, that's like, a you know, fact. It's sad that, you know, some politics, I think it's what I tell everybody, a lot of times in this business, you know, these guys understand. So you had a guy that went to Berryville for close quarter combat training or some tackle driving school. He might not know the conditions over there in South Carolina. He might not know how to move accordingly in Delaware. Mm -hmm. You got to know some people that have their foot to the ground and be able to maneuver through these cities. Like it's not about the artists. It's about the people that protect the artists. That's how right. are relations with certain people? That's right. Very true. That's right. Every city you go to, somebody got a gun. Mm -hmm. Every city you go to, somebody's a bad guy. Somebody's a tough guy. Somebody's a street guy. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Now, 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 what do you think? What's your idea of, you know, how these dudes should move, especially these cats with the chains and, you know, the hundred, the hundred thousand dollars, the two hundred thousand dollar chains, and when they want to move through the hood, what's what is the best way for you that you think they should be moving? I would say this, first of all. Why do you want to go to the hood? That's mm. number one. That part. Number, number two, if this is what you want to do, what is your budget for your safety? Like, this was so crazy. These jewelers and these everybody will wear Louis Vuitton or Benciago or all this crazy stuff. You want to be a, a what's it called? You would be a billboard for these goddamn designers don't give a fuck about you. How are you protecting yourself? Number one, do you have a tackle driver that knows the area? Number two, is your security license or arm? Number three, is somebody in that group a liaison with that community? Mm. Number four, do you have an advanced man? Fair. Number five, most important thing, do you have a man in your corner is going to tell you, don't do this and don't do that? Because anybody in their right mind would have told you, why are you going over there? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And as men, stop fucking with these women that live in clout off you. Mm-hmm. Cause that'll do it. That'll do it every time. And and you know I'm familiar with the area. There, there, there's no, yeah. There's no know. excuse to uh, be at a Roscoe's in that area. Just no excuse. This is the crazy part, Tank. Anybody in this world has Google Maps in their phone. You can pull up that area right now and look at it. It shows you what it looks like. You can see the people on the corner. You as soon as you pull in, there's a guy right there. By the driveway thing, is all guys on the corner shooting dice in front of the building. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. And think it's safe. 
That's my thing. Yeah, that's the yeah, yeah, extra in the movie Colors. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> colors. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Like that, you like, like at some point in time, when they start killing people in Beverly Hills by the mall, when they start killing people in these different neighborhoods, first of all, LA's always been crazy. See, people get misconstrued because they see the palm trees. They got the Caucasian females here. They get misconstrued. LA is the home of the gangbang. There's always been there's always been sharks out here. Fact. fact. That's a fact. Always. Always. And these neighborhoods, they ain't just now started getting bad. Yeah, they've been bad. Yeah, this shit ain't just yeah. happened overnight. <laughs> Yeah, See, shit, what, 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 what happens to the United States of America, right? You have these guys in between 13 to 21 that are America's nightmares. You have these kids that learn how to use assault rifles. You have these kids that know how to load clips up. You have these kids that aren't, aren't scared to shoot. So you have these kids that don't give a fuck. How are, even if you being an OG or somebody's an OG, you might not be able to control these young boys. These young boys move off a different era right now. Yeah, they don't care. So if you dealing with if you dealing with people who don't care, how do you how do you how do you meet that and how do you defend that? Mm-hmm. Listen, the bet, you know you got to play defense. Number one, why are we going here? Number two, go here. Disrespect to me, okay? Mm-hmm. If I do a, you have a lawyer for me. You got my bond. You got my bill. Since you want to go here, mm-hmm. and it might go left, and I go all the way left. What you gonna do for us? Because this was that important. You need a piece of fried chicken and waffle. What you gonna do? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And 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 unless you go through that checklist, if you don't come out on the other side of that checklist with a green light, then you need to stay your ass up out of there. Yeah. If you ain't went through that checklist mentally before you think about going in them areas, if you ain't went through that checklist, stay the fuck out of them areas, man. Because I got I got news for you. They don't want you over there. They don't Not want you all. over there. All, all, the, all these motherfuckers who think it's okay to be rolling through the hood, flossing through the hood, I promise you, they don't want you over there. They tolerate you. Exactly. Because you're giving them something. Exactly. They tolerating you for the video shoot. They tolerating you for the turkeys. They tolerating you for the free clothes or the free food or whatever the fuck you're doing over there. But get the fuck out of there because they don't want you over there. Quick. Nobody wants to be reminded they ain't shit. You see, this is funny shit, right? People be forgetting. Sometimes Fat Joe reminds people. Years ago when Sugar around here, these entertainers, these rappers, these athletes all had to check in and pay a tax. Yep. I'm talking about if you go back 10 years ago, these rappers were talking about shoot them up, bang, bang, bang. These guys were in line handing jewelry, earrings, money off. Because they didn't have the element to defend themselves against that type of character. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Come on, we we know. I, I've I've seen the press. I've yeah. been there. It's, I've seen the press. I've seen the press from Shug. I've seen the press from. I've seen it with my own eyes. And see, think the crazy part is, and this is what really gets me too is, if you gotta sell safety to somebody, then you don't, you're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's absolutely. That's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. Yeah. Or, 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 or or these managers. Oh, everybody, no, everybody likes him. They killed John Lennon. <laughs> right. You tell, you tell me who did John Lennon say he was going to fight, fuck, kill? Nobody. They smoked his ass. Facts. Facts. Shit, Robert Kennedy. Shit, JFK. Yeah. yeah. The list goes on. The list goes Martin there's, Luther King. There's people that probably go to your kid's school to hate your kids. No one is liked in this world. You can take your dog to the dog park. He might get into a fight. You can't predict what's going to go on. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like we said before, man, we say it again all the time. The 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 level, the the measure, the measure of success very in the very near future ain't gonna be what you're wearing or got on. It's gonna be who you got protecting you. Yes. That's gonna be the measure of success. It's the crazy part. You have never seen so many athletes. So many rappers all promote get security, get security, get security. I'm going to tell you what's crazy, right? And this is, y'all keep getting these guys y'all think might look apart or this part. <clears throat> you must be forgetting. They can look like police officers they want to. They're, they're shooting police officers. 
country right now. <laughs> right, right. If anything, you're going to draw that to you. That yep. part. That part. That part. That part. You can, well, what you what you always say, you you can walk around like this Fallujah if you want to. Yep. You, you can walk around like that full tactical, uh, the whole nine yards. You can go ahead. You can go ahead if you want to. But if you don't know what you're doing with that shit on. And most of them don't. If you, if you don't know what you're doing with Most that, of them don't. You find out real quick. It's just a look. And that's the shit that, that, that cracks me the fuck up. Because you can rail. You, us in the industry, we see it right away. You're like, yo, that's just a look. You would get your ass handed to you three blocks down the street. It's, it's, it's cosplay. Yeah. It's, it's cosplay. You costume. You, you wearing a costume. It's Halloween. And it's that's Halloween. just dangerous. That's just dangerous all the way around. Because now you selling the idea of protection. But you can't live up to that mm. at all. <laughs> and that, that right there is 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 priceless. Because as a horseman, the 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 idea of protection we sell, we live up to. One hundred percent through and through. I, I haven't I haven't heard any other. Now 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 this is the thing about it though. This is the sad part about it. And Jay talk about it all the time. We constantly prove our worth. Every Facts. night we constantly prove our worth. Facts. And watch others who have never proven their worth in any situation get paid easily. Easily. That's the burden of a horseman. Yes. That's the real burden of a horseman. Very the true. burden of a horseman is you prove how much you're worth on a daily basis and you watch other motherfuckers get paid that are worthless. Yeah, man. And, and then you can't say that because, oh, then you hate it. Then you hate it. You know what you do? No problem. There's this one famous word that every director says. Action. <laughs> you you won't see what you got working with you. <laughs> right? Right? Real shit. Because that's when it folds. That's when they become yep. Mr. Origami and just fold under pressure. <laughs> Straight up. Action. Because <laughs> it looked good. Said, oh, no. yeah. We were on tour. I'm not going to say the state. We're at a nightclub. Nightclub is under a bridge. Okay. <clears throat> Me and Tank were by the back door, JP was by the vehicles, and John was by the, because they had two entrances in the alley. Mm -hmm. Both, he came to the alley both ways, right? Yep, yep. And John was, John rotated both both entrances. I'm talking to a gentleman out there, the whole entire time I'm talking to the guy. I didn't even know the guy's a police officer. Mm -hmm. But then 30 minutes of talking, he said, you know, out here you got to be in the P's and Q's, right? He said, I hope you guys are protected. I have protection yourself. I said, my man, 100%. We got our corners covered like a motherfucker out here. And through the course of the night cam, when it was time to leave, he tapped the truck window like, you know what? 100%. You guys were good. Because mm -hmm. that situation, like we send Charles in the club. We don't need 90 bodyguards in the club. If we outside in the back, we came into the alley, we're going to leave the alley. That's you need right, eyes right. outside. That's yes. Because right. they're not going to get you when you're inside. They're going to get you when you're on your way no. out. Right. right. The threat. Oh. Yeah. Bodyguards looking for photo ops with their client. No, then what are we going to do get outside? Exactly. Who's talking to the drivers? Exactly. Yep. Exactly. How fast can we move? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You, you, you can't come outside and try to get, they tell you, boss, wait right here, let me get the cars lined up. Anything right. happen. Right. Right. Facts. Right. What, what, you remember the dude, I forget where we was at. You remember the cop when we was backstage pulling out of the venue and he said, you dudes move like a military unit. Dallas, Texas. Yeah, Dallas, Texas. You dudes move like a elite military unit. Right. You see, he said, I can tell you guys have served together for years. That yep. says that's, that says it all. Priceless. That right there is priceless. That's that's the value of a horseman. We're not putting dudes out here that ain't battle tested, that ain't nope. ready. We're not doing that. That's the difference between us and everybody else. When we stamp you and you go out in the field, you have been vetted. Through and through. You've been vetted. Ain't no making and, no and, mistakes. Oh, and Tank, this is another thing that people have to be aware of, right? If you have an artist that's the A-list artist on top of the world and you move into these major cities, and he goes out at night or just walks to the store or wherever you're, you're because the, your threat level is at an all time high. Cause can no one predict the weather right now in Cleveland, Ohio? 
Facts. You don't know what's going on there. You don't know if, if somebody to say, look, we hit every all tours getting robbed. We don't you don't know what's going on. Mm-mm. So you can't be out there on tour trying to talk to girls at the bar drinking. Mm-mm. I can prime example, Tank. We did rolling loud, two rolling louds. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was not one issue for Matt talk on that it. property. Talk about it. Look, look, look what happened in Toronto. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's a fact. That's the, that's the funny thing. Because you hire somebody got on a great T-shirt and, and tactical pants don't mean they can do something. And they're rolling out hand in combat. Mm-hmm. It's either yes. being the greatest or it's hand in hand combat. Yes. Yep. Now, now, now that's mathematics. Niggas can get mad all they want to. They, everybody had all the complaints when we took over Rolling Loud when we was out there. Yep. Everybody had all the complaints. We had not one issue backstage. We had not not one issue on VIP rises. We had no issues anywhere on the property. Nope. Now you, you it's, call. It's, it's, Five times we had that many security teams together, and everybody. Some people trying to do the job. Some people just chase, or just ch- check chasing. Then it's ego problem. Mm-hmm. And see, the funny thing is, and I will always remember this, right? He's dead. Chris Lighty. I wish Jay was on the phone. He would tell you this. Chris Lighty told Fifty, "Do you need your security to be this this big, this strong, this aggressive? You know what Fifty told Chris Lighty? Do I tell you how to live your life?" Mm. That part. Mm. Real shit. That's a fact. That's a fact. How you gonna tell a man how to protect himself? Yeah. That's crazy. How you gonna tell a man how to protect himself? What did Floyd say the day Vernon Force was killed? You need real security. You pay for bullshit security, bullshit happens. You yes. need security, it eliminates shit from happening. Yeah. Now nothing perfect. We might gotta smash somebody's teeth and throw some off the balcony. <laughs> But for the most part, they're to secure the line. That's right. Everybody making it home. That's right. Yep. That's, That's the mission. That's it. Home. No home matter man. what, everybody making it home. Everybody that walked in with us is walking out. And, and, and he said that on camera. That's on camera. You yep. want the best, Tank, you want to hire the best. The minute they killed those people in Buffalo, New York, at a grocery store, the minute they shot that school up in Texas, nothing in this world can be taken lightly. Everything is a threat. Because you don't know how it's going to go down. Yes. That's a fact. Everything and everyone. There's no exceptions to the yeah. rule. Yeah. There's no, there's so no such thing as a safe zone. Right now, they're killing innocent kids and they shooting people in grocery stores, elderly grocery stores, that no, this world isn't crazy, man. we got to play defense. Yeah, at all times. At all times. Yeah, even the individual that was driving around killing people, just shot like nine people, the black guy, drove around the city. Randomly. Yeah, just Randomly. shot like 16 people, killed six. Randomly, just because. Because he wanted to post that shit online. Now, yeah. yeah and, and, and I say it all the time. I, I'm a one-issue voter. I vote yep. based on one issue, and that's guns. Yep. Gun, gun two issues, guns and taxes. Yep. I don't give a fuck if you're a Democrat, Republican, I don't give a fuck what you are, guns and taxes. And any any black man, any black man or black woman talking about gun control in this country is a traitor. Through and through. One thousand percent. You can't like anybody anybody in this country did not see fuck the entertainment business. Just everyday life you have to protect yourself. Yes. Because you don't know what happens. At all times. At all times. At you all cannot times. predict the future, you can't predict how these people are gonna be. Because right now, killing people is cool right now. That's yeah. the trend. Yeah. Shooting somebody is cool. 100%. That's, that's that way it gets you posted on the news and all that shit. That's the newest, you know, newest post. And go out and kill someone. We're not, listen to me, we're not going to argue. We're gonna, we, if we have to have one verbal confrontation, we're going to say what we're going to say, and then it's done. The next move will be your demise. <laughs> that part. That part. Short I'm, and sweet. Our boys not going to argue back and forth. If I'm doing my job and you you impede me doing my job, I'm gonna say one time. If it goes from there, I'm gonna do my best to decapitate you. Facts. <laughs> Quick, my <laughs> Quick, my nigga, I mean, try to stomp your spleen out. Yeah. Then, then we'll figure it out from there. That's a fact. That's a fact. So come on, man. We in the business. We in the business of slaying demons, man. Yeah. That, that that's 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 the bottom line, man. These dudes. The dudes, the, the the dudes that kill PNB, the dude or whoever, uh, 
uh, shitty cuz. These are demons, my nigga. These are demons. Yeah. And we in the business of slaying demons. Don't get it twisted when you see these cats online or you see these cats in the streets or you see these kids. These kids are, are, are possessed as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. They're possessed. And I'm a demon slayer. There's no way I'm going to walk the streets walking around with all these demons out here talking all yeah. this shit, doing all this bogus <laughs> ass shit and taking any of that shit lightly. At all. This was in this world right here. You got people in this world that were bumping to somebody and then say, excuse me and thank you and get shot. You got, listen, I tell you, I was sorry for some time. All these women that go to gyms, to go to clubs, to go to stores, and these men ask for your phone number, they might get mad and hurt you. Mm. All the way. The most, listen me, the most dangerous job for a woman in this world right now is to go to the gas station at 8 o'clock at night, to go to the mall, or to go to the motherfucking nightclub. She's putting herself in jeopardy to get motherfucking hurt because number one, True. you're not, your guard is down. You're not thinking there's wolves out here. Yeah. That's a fact. And they hear. Yeah. And then what's sad to, you know, my biggest complaint is anytime some grown men will take a picture of a, of a video of a woman getting hit by a man, they'll do nothing. They need to get fucked up. Of course. Yes. Of course. Line them up, Listen, knock them out. If you took, had a survey right now, you took Nelson range right now, and you ask 100 women, have you had any type of strange encounter for a man at a grocery store, Walmart, Target? 120 will say, yes, I did. Yes. Mm-hmm. Guaranteed. Yeah, that's a fact. Just on top of that, any woman that pump gas at nighttime is going to, if you go to the gas station, not just Friday night, it could be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, at a certain time of night, you're going to have issues, man. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. I tell mine all the time. I tell mine all the time. Turn on your notifications. Turn on yep. your tracking. I need to know where you at at all times. You going to the store. You need to. It, it's imperative, man, because these motherfuckers out here. We're not even talking about the sex trafficking, and the nope. kidnapping, and the and the, and the uh, body part harvesting. All this shit is real. Listen, I, I tell mine stay on the phone with me till you get your gas. You get your ass back in that car, yep. and when you go. And this is about to buy. Any woman should know this. Soon before you get in your car, look in your car. Yep, Once check you the back car, seat. Lock your doors. Even if you run to the store, park by a fucking pump. It's easier to get out than parking in front of the store. Mm-hmm. Park by the pump. You can throw the motherfucking reverse and forward. If somebody get in your way, run their ass over. We'll figure it out later. Yep. Yeah, that's a thousand percent. That's a thousand percent. So, so, um, what are your thoughts on this Woman King shit? You saw it? You know what's crazy? <sighs> Me and my people were just talking about that. Like, the home, I was reading about the homie tribe, right? Vicious. And I, it's vicious type, but this is the part that gets so crazy, right? That people don't say what's really going on, right? Uh-huh. They talk about Africans and slavery, right? This, this is what is crazy, Tank. Now, the Comanche Indians, right? Mm-hmm. What Comanche would do, if you was a child in between 14 months to maybe five years, they killed you because there was no use for you because Comanches are on trail and travel a lot. Now, what they would do was, if you was in between the age of 10 on up, they could train you to be like them. Right. right. And they don't talk about that. Any, in, in history, you capture your enemy, you took him as a slave or you killed them. Mm-hmm. Now, we both don't tank as far as selling slaves. Yes, that's 100% bad. But that era of life, okay, they, they had slaves. Who sends out the SOS or the menu to send the shit to come pick the people up? <laughs> <laughs> now, as long as this world's been here, they had slaves. Exactly. Now, as far as the transportation of slaves and the buying and selling, what African king was in fucking England, Portugal, right. motherfucking America, Spain, right. Russia, Germany, France? Mm-hmm. Selling slaves. They had to lock his ass up too. Quick. Exactly. So, it's like I told you a couple of days ago. Do you think these ugly ass white people from motherfucking Britain just woke up to all that money? See, they don't remember. King Leopold killed them motherfuckers. Everything, listen to me. How did Britain get the gold? 
how did Britain get all the natural resources? You tell me what coal, diamond, mineral, copper uh, um, um, mine is in motherfucking Britain. Got the motherfucker saying, God God bless the queen. Right? Yeah. She stole every goddamn thing out of everything. Africa. Everything. But see, Tank, you know this for a fact. Anytime something is black and strong, they will beat it down for the negativity. Of course. Now, this reality, why was the French in Africa mm. that, the, the, that this women tribe had a fight against them? Mm-hmm. Now, look at Shaka Zulu. The Zulus, they yeah. took slaves from other, other, other people they beat. See, this is this is the trick bag, though. This is this is the this is the part that blows my mind. They want everybody to think all slavery was the same. It ain't the same. You're talking about nations and countries. They don't have currency. There was no there was no hundred dollars, thousand dollar rent. There was no currency. For if you wanted room, shelter, food, if you wanted access to resources. You were an indentured servitude. You were, you were technically a slave. Yes, that worked See, your way yeah, through. They want everybody to think no. It's always been indentured servitude since the beginning of time. But enslavement, when you're talking about breeding human beings, that's these motherfuckers, these white folks. They did that. Yeah, the Europeans. Yeah, then the Europeans created that shit. Yeah, facts. They changed the game with that. Yeah, one. they changed the game with breeding Hell, human like, beings oh. like fucking cattle. That's that's a yeah. European thing. And them motherfuckers got to pay for that. I don't give a fuck what they're talking about. Yeah, there's been slaves throughout history. See, Bill Maher with his bitch ass, he come out talking about, oh, well, there's always been slaves. So ain't nothing, you know, every nation has been enslaved. Get the fuck out of here. The Europeans this, are the first ones who started doing that bullshit. Hey, this this was, was it, um, slaves got introduced to Great Britain, I want to say 1622 or something like that. Mm-hmm. Now, this white, this, this what it is. This white correspondent was on TV talking to Don Lemon. Mm, I, saw got, I saw that. I saw that. You got the right, you got the right yellow back coon that can't put up with them in argument because he don't know who he is. <laughs> had it been somebody else, Facts. had it been was that president? Corn, what his name is Cornell something? The black Cornel, guy. Yeah, name yeah, 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 yeah. He would he would have torched that European. Exactly. The fact when they were dealing with slaves of Africa at first, they were buying slaves off the Africans for for ginger, uh, spices, and blankets. They took them and brought them over here and got thousands of dollars. You can't mm-hmm. tell me this, right? Mississippi is the poorest, fattest state in America, mm-hmm. all right? The crazy part, Tank, when slavery was popping, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, Alabama was a million billionaire state. Cotton, yeah. 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 Free labor. Free labor, do it. Free labor. Every major, listen, every major corporation gets tied. Every insurance company. Now, that, now that's crazy. That's the craziest part. They insured these slaves, so you got you got insurance policies that go back to the 1600s of Look, slavery. I got I got one better for you. Oregon, mm. Alabama, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Louisiana still have slavery on the ballot. It's 2022 right now. Wow. You tell me what's wrong. <laughs> Come on, man. The world we live in, man. Come on, man. They they, they trying they to were, pull the wool they, over they were they were, they were breeding tribes for palm oil. A palm tree. Yeah. Mm. I, so if you're going to be real, you really going to see this apart, Tank. No one knows how to be real when it comes to work. what's hurtful. Yeah. The, I can promise you this. The Africans weren't, weren't, weren't making the son fuck the mother. The Africans weren't breeding a big black guy for big black slave making big black babies. Mm. The, yes. Afri- the Africans weren't let people, but based upon color, you stay in the hut, she stays on the ground. Facts. That's a fact. That's a fact. Now, that shit, that right there is created by the Europeans. Now, see, the Europeans and the Arabs, don't don't let me give a pass to the Arabs, too. Them motherfuckers. Yeah, come on. Come on. Them motherfuckers, the the Mamluks, them motherfuckers right there. See, and that's the thing about history. I don't trip because everything comes full circle. Always. Everything comes full circle. Okay, cool. Y'all got us for a couple couple hundred years. Okay, no problem. (laughs) <laughs> we've been around. We've been on this motherfucker for hundreds of thousands of years. You got a couple hundred. I give you that. But it's going back. I promise you, it's going back. That's what they fear. Yeah. This is we gonna get back. You gonna pay for that shit. Trust me. They, I tell everybody, dog. This, this this is what Donald Trump's secret sauce was. 
He took what people said behind closed doors in the 2000s, and he made it feel comfortable to say it out in the open. Yep, yep. And that's it. Because once you make a white person feel inferior, see, look, this it's just like us, right? Let me tell you something. If you and me get a job and we get to a white person, okay, if they feel intimidated by us, they know they can't beat us physically. You know next thing they do? They're going to call the police. If that don't work, they say they're going to call the labor board. If that don't work, they want to say they're going to sue somebody. They always have to try to find something where they feel like they have more power than us. When it comes to just being men, they can't be. No. Yeah, See, people, no. people, people don't take that into consideration. No, that's a fact. I'm cutting out. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Because that's that's how they do. See, people are saying this. And when you when the, when the police officers can stop somebody and ask you what you're doing and where you're going and you ain't committing no crime, you're a fool to even talk to them. Yep, yep. Yep, every time. That's a fact. I, I say it all the time. You you the dummy for talking to him. Yeah. You you the dummy for talking to him. Every time you get in a conversation with a cop that ain't got nothing to do with nothing and you ain't did nothing, you stupid for talking to him. Right now, if you went to any high school, you got a girl, say a kid, from sixth grade, fourth grade, ask her what she knows about American history. She 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 not gonna anything. You got kids out here don't even realize they can't even name all the wars in America. They don't even realize that there's a motherfucking French American Indian War, the Mexican War. Mm-hmm. If you in California, we in Mexico. Yep. That's, a, that's a fact. <laughs> that's a fact. That's one thousand percent talking about the immigration. They trying to get their shit back. Mm. I'm gonna tell you something I want to touch on too, right? That brings my attention. <clears throat> they were talking about DJ Khaled, right? I mm. think you were doing this. I'm just gonna this I'm gonna, I'm gonna dedicate this part to the clowns. DJ Khaled is Palestinian. We as our community have made this obese little fat man popular and he don't even talk about his country. That's so you be, as soon as you say something about Palestine, you know what they do tank? They shut your bread off. Yep. The only person that's ever said anything publicly about Palestine besides that that uh, uh Lamont Lemon. No, not Lamont Lemon, um, Lamont something. Black, young black guy. Yeah. It's, I Be- it's, Be- it's, it's Bella Habib. Yeah. She checked him all the time. Yeah, that's a fact. You talking, about, you talking about Lamont Hill? You, yeah. yeah. As, soon as, you start, as soon as you say something about motherfucking Palestine, they will shut your ass. I tell you, in America, you can't talk about guns, you can't talk about gays, you can't talk about Jewish people. That will get your bread shut down. Quick. Fast. Faster than you can blink. That yes. shit that had you in the fucking poorhouse. Yep. Yes. Yeah. You saw it. So I did LeBron. Yep. They made it humbled him. Yep. Sean Jackson humbled him. Steven Jackson humbled him. Yep. Nick yep. Cannon came after him. Nick, mm-hmm. No, they publicly humiliated him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Drove that motherfucker crazy. Man. He, he's completely insane. This nigga's a walking, he's a walking but, bank for prostitutes. But, you can say anything about any minority is not an issue. Yeah. I told somebody, look, do you think it's, listen, right now, if you went to the Midwest, look how many Germans descends in the Midwest because the United States America gave all those people from Europe land. Mm. The Nazis. Look at, look at this, do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Operation Paperclip. Mm. Mm. Look what they did to the Japanese people they imprisoned during the war in, in uh, San Francisco. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Camps. See, this, this, is me think. this is why when people talk about critical race theory, y'all, first of all, if you have a, if you, if your kid is in between one to four years old, a black and white kid, even five, they don't see color. They see boy and girl. That's right. When they start learning hate and bigotry, that comes from the family. Facts. That's a fact. Yeah. And it's, it's like somebody was telling me something. Oh, they're having transsexuals come to the schools, and re- I, I haven't seen it yet. Or <laughs> drag came and read a kid a book. Oh shit! They got they got one time. They got one time <laughs> to fuck. With. They got one time to fuck with me. It's a wrap. They got one well, see, time to fuck with me. This would be the crazy part. This lady was talking about this thing, right? Right now, if a 16 year old kid say that Tank offered her tickets to the show and see her pussy, they're going to lock you up. That quick Tank, to tell- t- first of all, <laughs> <laughs> disclosure Tank ain't never offered a motherfucking nothing. 
reference yourself. God <laughs> damn. Well, look. Okay, so, okay. We'll say Joe Flat. There Joe you Black, go. Awesome. <laughs> there you My go. My thing is, look at my face. How you not in trouble, bro? There's proven records that a motherfucker that you on you transactions for sex. Right, that's right. This was everything, Tank. I told somebody. If you think that shit at Mar-a-Lago was a raid, then you stupid. Yeah. Google what a police yeah. is. They didn't kick down Trump's doors. They didn't put guns. Nobody's come, come on, man. And Everybody, they, and, nobody. And they made sure he wasn't there. Yeah. Since when they ask you for? Since when they ask for your location before they raid you? Right. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, sir. We're gonna kick in your door. You just wanna make sure you're not home. Yeah. Fuck out of here, man. Give you time to get rid of all the evidence. The fuck out of here. Man. The fuck out of here. But see, but see, Tank, the thing is this, right? So, you have a lot of CIA agents that are in prison because they took home classified documents. So, why is Donald Trump in prison? Mm, that part. How the OG some allegations against this man, but nothing sticks? I told you. January 6th should have showed the world, no matter what you believe, what is going on criminally with the people? Had there been a bunch of black, brown, yellow people, niggas be dead. Yeah, bodies. Quick. Bodies. Listen, Wouldn't even we, be on we, TV. We talk about it all the time, dog. Any 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 death, any murder in the commission of a crime is a felony. Is a murder felony. Now one person caught a murder charge and it was three murders no. during the insurrection. You had one homicide where the girl was shot straight up. Kill. Mm -hmm. Everybody's supposed to get a murder charge on that one. Yep. And you had another cop. You had another cop that was beaten to death. Mm. Yep. But hey, this is the crazy part. That one officer for known, Michael for known. You beat him. You tased him. You stomped him. You try to take his firearm from him, all this stuff. That's assault with deadly weapon. That's attempted murder. Mm -hmm. They ain't gonna charge him. And this is the funny part. But you got these motherfuckers be blue lives matter. Well, how them talking to me no matter then? Yeah, yeah. All right. Come on. And where's the Rico? No, Come you on. can't do that. At that point, everybody got to go. Where's the Rico charge? Hey, now. They only keep that for niggas. Trying to tell me the Proud Boys and Oath Keepers, there's no money trail going to them? Mm. Donation. Where's the donation trail at? He was at a hotel in Baltimore doing encrypted emails and speeches on how to move. Come on. You trying to tell me it, it wasn't no surveillance or how to do this, how to do that. The funny part is when half the people act active military, half the people act law enforcement, and nothing happened. Yep. Come on. Come on. That's, the game The game is obvious, man. That's the sad part. The game is obvious. All you got to do is pay attention. All you got to pay, all you got to do is pay attention. You you, you locked, you locked uh, Gunner up. Now one crime, all lyrics. That part. You got him on all lyrics. All lyrics. But yet and still, you got Laura Ingram. You got that motherfucker who what's that? Uh, Tucker. Oh my God. Come on, man. They inciting riots and revolutions on a nightly basis over with their words. <laughs> now one indictment. And hey, this is the crazy part, right? I forgot to touch on this. How come it took a female Nicki Minaj to say what she said? Mm. Now, the first thing everybody as a man in a rap world should have said this. Like you say, the people around you don't care about you because they let you go out here like that. That yeah. part. Like the, the, for anybody to think they're that egotistical, that these neighborhoods, that these cities, that these towns love them, they're insane. Mm -hmm. Through and through. Mm -hmm. Complete insanity. Because at that point, you're food. And like I said before, when you're around people that are hungry and are starving, not even hungry, they're starving. Come on. They're going to eat. You can't put a plate in front of someone that looks appetizing and expect this person hasn't had nothing their entire life. And they're not going to reach for that plate. Fuck out of here. Or, or, you know what it is right now, too? And this is the crazy part. The level of, remember years ago, yo, man, you better not go down there. Yep. That was the warning. Now, these people on the show, I'll show you what I'm going yeah. I'm going to show yeah. you why you can't move. Right. See, people, now, is this is the part, once I talk about America, once we get hurt, we're the biggest victims. But had Pete went there and took pictures and had an argument with somebody, but no, 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 no. See, when you let people know they're sharp as water, if you get into the water, you're going to get eaten. Now you're victims. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Now, now you, you and I both know what it's going to take. 
You and I both know what it's going to take. It's going to take somebody getting their motherfucking brains blown out on an attempted on an attempted robbery for them to understand, stop playing. Hey, you, listen, you, you, took, you took words from off. It's going to take somebody trying to jack one of these rap entertainers mm-hmm. and his body that nigga. Yep. Yep. Then, then, then what's going to be? But even then, they're going to flip it on, on whoever's doing the protection. They're going to make it something they weren't doing their job. Yeah, but th- this is the thing. This is the thing about it. And I said it before. I said it again. When you lead a house, when you lead a house, you should be pre- prepping for your own defense. When I leave the house, everything I do is prepping for my own defense. I'm prepared. I want to be I want to be the number one asset to my defense attorney. I tell everybody, if you do security and you leave your house, you're supposed to have your black bag. In your bag is a extra underwear, extra socks, extra black T-shirt, extra collar shirt, extra black hoodie or black jacket, a flashlight, a firearm with four magazines, some money for you, your passport, and some food. Because you don't know what the night's going to entail. Yep. And if you like that, you're a fucking fool. Yep. 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 Live in a city where you can't protect yourself, you're a fucking fool. Yep. You saw they passed that purge law in Illinois. That's the smartest man. thing they did. Come on, man. Come on. That shit. That shit that's right about there. To be the, about, that's about to be the that most shit about polite. To like wildfire. That's about to be the most polite, on most polite society in the country. Because yep. everything goes. Yep. At first, it's gonna be bananas. I ain't gonna lie. Nah, everybody, I like everybody to be a fly gonna on the be wall for that shit. Everybody gonna be yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. You think so? Listen, what it, all it takes is what all it takes. You notice. Know you, if, if your father told you to be at home at 9 o'clock and you got home at 10 o'clock, you got the dog shit beat out of you. <laughs> the next time five rolled around, you was going home. All it's going to take is a severe punishment That's to it. keep a nigga in. That's it. That's it. That's what's next. Yeah. That's what's next. Yeah. It's going to take, it's it's gonna take somebody getting their motherfucking brains blown out. When they pass the ball, that like choice, watch the police don't come. Watch the motherfucking ambulance don't come. See, people understand. The crazy part is a lot of these law enforcement agencies want this shit to happen so they can come back and get a bigger budget. Yeah. So you see what happened? You're not here. See, it's, it's all a ploy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, like, or, 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 or they, it's gonna be it's gonna be straight up. It's gonna be straight up Escape from New York. You remember the movie Escape from New York? <laughs> they gonna build. Yeah. A- <laughs> they gonna build the walls around the suburbs. <laughs> they gonna build the walls around the suburbs, and you niggas is on your own. That's what's coming. Just, yeah, just like it did. Just like it did. Hurricane Katrina, Jackson Parish, yep. yep. Charles. The people that lived there had a compound. If you don't live here, you will get shot. Exactly. And you, and you went on the property. You got your head. You got your head blown off. They didn't. They, they don't talk about that. They don't talk about that in New Orleans, Katrina. They don't talk about how many nope. people got their head blown off because you walked into the wrong area. Once they start circling the wagons, once those they start circling the wagons, it's a wrap for you niggas. And I tell you niggas, like I said every fucking Sunday, I know where I'm gonna be. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know where me and mine gonna be. Yeah, we gonna be on we gonna be, we gonna be on the other side of the walls, protecting all the people with the money. Cause you niggas, <laughs> you niggas is about to be on your own. I tell everybody, dog, take yourself twenty five hundred dollars or three thousand dollars. Go buy yourself some guns, some ammunition, and stockpile your shit so when it comes out, you protect it. Yep. Bare minimum. That's the that's like the least you can Bare do. Bare minimum. And, and 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 the other aspect of it, the other aspect of it is you better have some type of you better have some type of knowledge on growing some food. Right. Yeah. Because that's what that's what the next step is. The next step is you can't eat unless we give you the okay. Yeah. Why you think they buying yeah. all these farms, man? They, they ain't buying all these farms for no reason. Come on. They burning down the fucking yeah. factories and shit. This is the crazy part. You don't even hear about Buffalo, New York no more. Mm. The mm. crazy part is you ain't heard one person talk about who trained this boy. How did he get all these? It's like, it's like a boy in Texas. Yep. How did a 17, 18-year-old boy no, have no job, get a brand new truck? The firearms he had told out to be at least $7,000, both firearms. Who, how you get the money? How you get the money? No job. No job. Living at home with his parents. Yeah. And no one knew. No one knew that he had all these firearms. Part-time cross-dresser. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was the boy from Texas. Uh-huh. Who trained him? Who? Exactly. And this is the crazy part. 
any, and I'm, 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 my heart goes out to them parents. But had that been mine in that school, okay, it have been, it it have been, it have been a standoff outside in front of the school. Exactly. Because you're not gonna tell mine. Exactly. Right. Exactly. You ain't gonna tell me I can't go in. I would have been the, the first responder. The shots going off. First like responder. But if, if somebody hurt mine, everybody that somebody's family is done. That's Cat, a- dog, care, key, aunt, grandma, uncle, they done. And Thank then you. I figured out from there. And, and and that's the horseman law. I, I, I that's the horseman law. I tell. I told my uh my little girl, I told her, man, if you do something to my daughter, you last. You last. You last. You're gonna witness it all. You last. I'm getting your mama and everybody who love you first. Yep. You're gonna be the last one to go. Oh. You're gonna watch me eat your fingers. <laughs> Finger looking good. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking, speaking, speaking of that, <laughs> anybody see that Dahmer shit on Netflix? No, I haven't watched it. Man, these motherfuckers is crazy. Through and through. These motherfuckers is crazy. They got this white boy eating niggas' asses. Eating niggas' asshole first on a motherfucking... <laughs> when I tell you they giving niggas the bad rap, niggas is toast. Oh, it's the crazy part, right? Police officer came. He was able to tell the cop, "Oh, this is just my boyfriend. He's mad," <sighs> and, and and gave the nigga back. That's right. Like, this is a funny shit, right? You could take your cell phone right now, your rocks book, right, and Google how many times police and came to black people's house for a wellness check. <laughs> Man, they fight you to get it in your house. Man, nigga, they kicking hey, down wait. the door like they no. serving a warrant. How many times did they came to the wellness check and killed the nigga for the wellness check? The, the yeah. nigga you was supposed to be checking on, you kill that part. But nigga that, ass he, I'll let him go. Come on, man. man. No sense. They gave the nigga back. They gave the nigga meal back to him. No but sense. you saw what happened. As soon as they put you where you're supposed to go, it's like, you can't go there. You ain't going to survive. It's like Charlie Manson. People yeah. told Charles Manson was like, no, he was all right. So when Charles Manson went to San Quentin, he was sucking dick, getting beat the fuck up every day, <laughs> trying to get protection from the brotherhood. They weren't fucking with him. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But on street. But on the street, you was a monster. Yeah, yeah. you was a cold, you was a cold killer till he got you behind them fucking walls. That part, because you, you could manipulate college educated college girls. Exactly, it's a cold killer behind the wall. See that, and that's the and that's the thing about it. That's the that's the thing what we get into right now. They they the weak is going to kill and eat the weak. Facts. Yep. They, the weak is going to kill and eat the weak. They're not gonna fuck with the strong. No. See, so we tell them every time you're supposed to project strength. Yeah, they don't want to fight. They don't want to fight. They want to be able to walk in and take over yeah. weak individuals. Yeah. They, they look at us. Easy. They look at us and they know. They know for sure it's going to be a fight to the end. They want it easy. They want it easy. The reason why we can go two tours, promo tours, and a full uh, uh, American tour, not one stage jumper. Come on. Say it again. Come on. Not one stage jump. That part. Now we done seen every nigga, every nigga on stage somebody done ran up on. Right? Yep. For a year straight. Yep. You 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 you're not doing that at a horseman show. Not at all. Nope. Ain't no way in Buttfuck Egypt you're doing that. Pity the fool. I pity the fool that attempted. And Tank, this is another thing too. You said that. Bad bunny might got the biggest but the bad bunny get two jumpers a night. Man. Mm-hmm. Two jumpers a night. Absolutely. Quick, and the last one I saw, I just seen the one with the female standing. The, the, the house guard was literally three feet away from her. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yo, how in the fuck was she able to get over the guardrail, then make it through the little five-foot you know, barrier, and then make it to the stage without no one seeing her? See, and, and they're not going to stop They're not gonna stop that till somebody get hurt. Yeah, because ain't no way in fuck. Ain't no way in fuck. I'm sorry. She would have been hurt. She would have been in the hospital talking about rocks. I just wanted an autograph. Yeah, have them sign your cast because your shit going to get broke. Yeah, it ain't, ain't no way. They're trying to set a precedent for the stage jumping and the, and the breaching. That's what it is. It's a security breach. Yes. And at that point, everyone at that point needs to be on high alert and treat everybody like it's a serious, dangerous threat. The fact that that shit was able to happen to Chappelle and... Like Come you on. said, it's still able to happen to Bad Bunny, which is shit. He's been on what top one for like what, nineteen weeks. So this is literally yeah. one of the the top artists out in our time right now, mm-hmm. and people are able to hop over a barricade. Which at that point, if you hop over a barricade at any concert, it's you're asking for it. 
So please let this be an advisement to anybody that plans on hopping over a barricade. That's a security breach. Don't and, do and it. See, Tank, let me touch on something else, right? And people can't get Mayor Lightfoot. See, people be forgetting Chicago's in the state of Illinois, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So when this, 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 this new law got passed, right? Now, this is a question you got to ask yourself. But, you know, the robbery, the murder, the kidnap, the arson would not have motherfucking cash bail, right? Now, you cannot just talk about Chicago then, because that's the city, the state of Illinois. See, what are you going to do about that then? So all these motherfucking the GDs, the BLs, the DF, the Cobras, the Rangers, when they fight and shooting this block, that block, does that apply to them? No. See, and that's the funny thing about it. No, because that's a separate... That's a separate state. They do the same thing out here in Vegas. The laws that are in North Las Vegas ain't the law. Ain't the same laws in Vegas right. and Summerlin and Henderson. See, that's they splitting they, yeah. the shit up. That's, that's why we said, yeah. That's why they say when they circling the wagons, that's what they're doing legally. They're circling the yeah. wagons. They're about to legally make it legal to blow your motherfucking head off in certain areas of the country right. where you go. Yeah. Well, no questions asked. Right. No and, questions asked. And that's the and that's the hint to stay the fuck out of there. See, and the funny thing is, like you said, nobody is asking about the city of Chicago. Well, we understand the state law. Is the state law, is it going to be acceptable in Chicago? If that's the case, we don't want to see Tucker Carlson talk about 65 students in Chicago over the summer. No, no. This means the state of Illinois, I'll blow your brains out, I get to go home and eat dinner. Exactly. Yep. Period. Period. And that's about to res- and that's about to be the that's about to be the mold in every fucking country. I don't give a fuck yeah, what I, this clown said. Like said. This law shouldn't just just exist in Moline, Illinois, or Joliet. What is it doing for the city? I mean, that's the part that no one's speaking on. Right. Y'all keep bad mayor lights with the mayor can't pass no bill. No. That's from the Senate. No. That's the Senate. No. And then the governor. Yeah. Open that shit up for everybody. If it, if it's gonna go yeah. for the suburbs, if it's gonna go for the suburbs, it's gonna have to go downtown too. It's gonna have to go in the neighborhoods yeah. too. Yeah. We want it all that yeah. way then. But they ain't gonna do that. They're going to try to avoid it as much as possible because they know that that's, that's the trick bag. They're going to have to because the, the the simple fact is when these Republicans get in the office and they all coming yep. and they all coming into office, that's why I tell niggas all the time, go get your CCWs, go get your records clean, go do whatever you got to do. Get your because passports. When these mother- get your passports because when these motherfuckers come back in the office and they take over, it's every man for themselves. Listen to me. Kyle Rittenhouse shows you that you can live in fucking Illinois and have a gun permit in uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Kill two people. Yeah, and Kyle Rittenhouse showed you that. So the same law should continue. Yeah. So right now, I live in Chicago, can go out of state and get another gun license. And come back in the state. And come back in the state. And come back in the state. See, that's see that's the cold thing about Kyle Rittenhouse. The fact of the matter is, is somebody else bought a pistol from the state, went out of state with it, gave it to him, and he came back in the motherfucking state with the pistol, with mm. the gun. No, no. AR-15. Or AR-15. He came back in the state with the AR-15. Because the state of Wisconsin, it was a hunting rifle. Right. See, now, I tell motherfuckers all the time, see, and we done dealt with this with motherfuckers talking about, oh, I got a hunting license, I can this, that, I can do this and this and that. Okay, listen. Play them games if you want to. Right. Play them games if you want to. If you got a hunting license and you and you a nigga and you get caught with a firearm, you are going away for a legal firearm. Exactly. Period. Point blank. I don't give a fuck what somebody told you. You can get a hunting license and walk around with a gun. Play them games if you want to, dog. And see, Tank, this is what no one's talking about, right, also. So there's a state law, statewide purge law, right? Who's playing? Who's paying the police department? Who's paying the fire department? Are they still getting paid still? Right. So remember this. The state, you take our taxes to pay these people. Yeah. So if these people are getting paid because they are needed. Where the money going? The yeah, where the money going? That goes from the, the police officers, the detectives, mm-hmm. the sheriffs, mm-hmm. the department. Who's, how are they still getting paid if they're not needed? You just told the state, just told you. You can't hear. You can't enforce law here. Who's saying them? Yeah, but what they saying? What they saying by not saying it? What they saying by not saying the purge law? What they're giving is the power to the militias. Yeah, that's all that is. Yeah. Privatized, privatized policing. That's where all the power is about to go to. When you, when you, the fucking 
the fucking constitution they keep talking about right to bear arms was for militias. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's where the power is going. Privatized policing. It's about to be escape from New York. Rich neighborhoods is about to circle themselves off and cut themselves off from everywhere else. Use private police, private militarized police, yep. and the rest of you motherfuckers is on your own. That's it. I'm, you probably don't remember this. Hey, about three years ago, right? There were these badass fires in um, from Malibu to Calabasas to Wooded Hills. The Kardashian family hired a private fire department. Yes. To, but, yeah, Kanye. That's when yeah. Kanye was yeah, there. Kanye, yeah. Make sure, yeah. His, make yeah. sure his shit didn't burn. Yep. Yeah. See, people, people, see, people, you forgetting. You just touching it. There are there's a such thing in this world as a private ambulance, mm -hmm. a private motherfucking fire department, a private motherfucking police department. See, people don't realize that like you said these people are going to get the checks. Yep. Yep. Big time. That's where the money going. That's where the money going. That's where the money about to be. That's where the money. And the crazy part is the state. Is the one that pays these people. Mm -hmm. Just like private prisons. Yep. Yep. Just like corporate prisons. So they about to have their own police force, their own prison, and their own resource offices. So all the resources is about to be protected because they're going to they gonna round all that up. Yeah. Food, grain, farms, all that's about to be under their control. All the policing is about to be under their control and the prison under the control. See, this is the part they don't talk about, right? If anybody is smart, right, they'd have to realize, right, and this were to come, this this, this will be the this will be the, the um argument head, okay? It's something called the Fourteenth Amendment. The Fourteenth Amendment violates that because you're supposed to have due process. That's well, that's the Sixth Amendment. Due process for the speedy trial, and due process the right to be held, prosecution to be held under surveillance. That goes to the Fourteenth, the Eighth, and the Sixth Amendment. So they gonna throw them out the doors. Mm, and remember this. So they keep see this is the crazy part. They say everything, but then in the constitution, a no bail is in the constitution. So now the constitution don't mean shit because you you just purge the city. Mm -hmm. You yep. purge the city. See, this is how you know they want these papers to say what they want them to say when they want them to say it. Because what's the first thing they say? Freedom of speech, constitution, speech. right constitution. here. So now. The bail situation, the speedy trial, is part of the Constitution. So now that's thrown out the window. Yep. Yeah. It's a it's a complete setup. It's a complete a complete setup from the jump because they changing the rules as they go. Now, so now if you live in Chicago, you get pulled by the police. No, this is a purge a purge state. I have the right to bear I have the right to bear arms. Check myself. No, you don't. Illegal fire. I'm going to prison. You know what I'm saying out of here. Out of here. Now see it, the setup. Like I said before, the setup. Like I said before. You run. You playing games based on Democrat and Republican. All you Negroes is running around. I'm gonna vote Democrat. This, that, and the other. But you're not even watching the game. You're not even watching the field because they getting ready to set it up to where all the white folks got all the rights and you ain't got shit. Nope. All ge geography. Everybody know about redlining. Everybody already yes. know about redlining. So based on the geography and the purge laws as they got it set up, if they set it off and cut it off, what you gonna do in the hood? The fuck you gonna do in LA? Right. What you gonna do in Baton Rouge? Right. What you like gonna you do said, in the pork it ain't and be beans? About money, it's gonna be about food. At yeah. that point, how you gonna feed your family? It ain't a fuck a job. What you gonna do in Little Haiti? It, it, there's nothing you can do once they corner that shit off and set those rules up in place. Ain't shit you can do. It's you on your own. Yep. It's, it's like the crazy. They don't talk about also like you said. What you gonna do in, in Chicago and city? Yeah. It's a wrap. You can't even go to the city. You go to Chicago right now, you can tell where you at immediately. Because white folks don't go across the bridge. The motherfucker, we, we was down there, we was down there doing the goddamn promo tour. The white man came to the airport. The motherfucker came to the airport and right. got his autograph signed because he said, I ain't going down there to the so motherfucking that's a bad neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yeah, I would have I would have went there, but it was a bad neighborhood, so I chose not to. And Which this is a straight to our face. Straight to our face. Smart choice. Smart choice, all the way round and round. Do you hear me, killer? This nigga came to the yep. airport. This thing came to the airport and was like, man, I came up here to get my shit signed. And the nigga brought two tickets. He brought a ticket to LA and New York. He was like, I figured y'all was going to one of them. So therefore, <laughs> I'm going to just sit here and wait because where y'all was at was too dangerous for me. Come on, man. Yep. They tell me. Rock, 
Rocks touched on something earlier about the produce. Now, everybody knows, Tank. Everybody know Microsoft owns most of all the produce in America. Nice. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. You still yeah. on? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Microsoft owns all the produce in America. See, they be forgetting. You forget this thing. That the motherfucking... Remember the farms, all that shit was dying out. The pandemic came, the milk was nine dollars, eggs were ten dollars. That's a fact. You don't hear no about the farms no more. No, no. But remember, they was burning the motherfucking farms. They was paying us to yeah. burn their farms. Like six of them, six of the the factories burnt. Yeah, them. they was yeah. paying them to burn their food processing plants. This shit ain't coincidence. Oh. You you don't get six fires at six different plants all doing the same shit. That just so sort of happenedly, conveniently burned the fuck down. Get the fuck out of here. Come on, man. It's just chess, not the, checkers, man. The moral of the story is <laughs> you about to find out, the world is about to find out what the value of protection really is. Now we've been we've been screaming, we've been sounding the alarm for years. We've been sounding the alarm for years that protection is gonna be the most valuable asset, the most valuable resource right. in this country. Is protection. Enjoy. A normal order. Now, your ability to protect yourself, your ability to protect your family, yeah. is going to be true wealth. I just right. through and through, though, because it goes to the point where now, at this point in age, we live in this time where anybody can get it. Anybody can get it. Anybody. Yep. It doesn't matter who. Doesn't matter where. Doesn't matter where you're from. Doesn't matter what color you got on. You can get it. Yeah. True. You know wealth. that shit. True wealth is protection. Rock, you just touched on something. And this is the most serious thing to America, right? Everybody is vulnerable right now. Yes. Yes. And that's what scares them. Yep. That's what scares the fuck out of them. Now, all of a sudden, it's just not happening. It's happening everywhere now. Yes. To the point where you can't even, you should, like you, like you said, have your bag ready. Even as a, as a civilian, that are, if you're not in protection, you should still have a checklist when you walk out the door because at this day and age, you never know. It may not even be nothing personal. It could be just the motherfucker had a bad day. His girlfriend broke up with him. Whatever the fuck. Internet work, not working type shit. He want to go kill somebody. Everybody can get it. And that's what it is. That's it. That's all. And that's, uh, for me, personally, that's why I never turn this shit on, man. The shit that I learned going through the ranks of what I went through as a horseman, it should never get turned off. Because I know. No, it take, let me say two things. You, Rock, you touched on something. Okay. Maybe about a year ago, right? It happened in Virginia. It was this huge ice storm, right? Mm -hmm. And a tractor trailer broke down, and everybody was stuck on the highway. I remember that. For, yes. For yeah, almost, yeah. almost 20 hours. So I tell everybody that should show the people always make sure your car is full of gas. Yep. Okay. Always make sure you have a mercy blanket. A flashlight, yep. water, food, you know what I'm saying, in your car because you don't know what's going to happen. You can't predict that. Once you leave outside, you have to be, in case I can't make it back, I'm reassure myself I'm going to be okay. Yes. And no one, no one like that. No. Yeah. The, the idea of help is coming, get it's rid of that way. idea. Nah, get rid way. of that shit because help, help is you. Help, the only help you have is the preparation you had before you left the house. Yep. That's a fact. And if you didn't prepare, you're going to find yourself in a situation where you're going to be the weak, trying to get someone weaker, or you're going to just die. It sucks even, to say, but that's what it even, is. You, it's either or. Touch, even when you touch on farmlands, like you say, seven farms burnt down. This is the crazy part. Who's getting that insurance? If we all, hey, you, you and me, nobody, anybody. Everything in his lifetime has to be insured. Facts. So the arms that got burnt down, where that money going? Yep. yep. Who's Follow the money. Follow the money. You always find out who, who's behind the shit. I don't give a fuck what it is. So you know what they do, right? This is what happens. And these farmers are, have, say they're late on their payments for their property. So once it burns down, all the fucking government got to do is seize the land now. Yep. Yep. See, people, when you, when you had all these black farmers on TV, they were telling you, we have no financial income no more. The government seized the land. And took it. Eminent domain. Yeah. 
Because look, you, look, it's like, it's people don't say people don't realize this. If you do the history of California, the same fucking fires happen in the same fucking place every time. Every it's year. It's all about. Yeah. Yeah. The only time it really got put to America's eyes years ago, right? It was two separate cases. One was in Oregon. The government tried to take these free, these free grazers' property. Like, this is our private property. Oh, no, this is federal property. And the ranchers had a standoff. That was one. Number two was. And I think it was Utah or Wyoming when they tried to do the shit with the Indians. Yeah. Fire. But the see, fire the creek. thing is, they, they handled the white boys differently because the white boys were like, nah, we're going to kill somebody. So what the Indians is, they sent actual people there to bust up the protest. Yep. They fought. It, took, it took a handful of veterans to be like, fuck this. We're going to go there and we're going to provide security for these people. That's yeah. right. See, they, this, two, two things of land seizure by the government that were handled totally different. As a matter of fact, the motherfucker with the ranchers had a sniper on the bridge. Remember that? Yeah. He yeah. had a sniper on the bridge that was aimed at the motherfucker police. As you and they all got off. Yeah. As you they should. all got yeah. off. They all got acquitted. All because they wanted land. Because yeah. I told you, listen, all they got to do is, hit, is government property. You got it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Government seizure foreclosure. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. This, this, will, this is what... We don't talk about enough, right? Now, you people that rent homes and apartments, every, every landlord, by law, state law, it has to be a safe, healthy environment. That's nice. number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, every landlord has a budget for each unit. When you have these people, these landlords, these apartment complexes, and they're not keeping up to the stuff, all you have to do, number one, is contact your state health board. That's number one. If that don't work out, contact OSHA. All right? If that don't work, then you go to the state governor. You go to the mayor of the city. You go to city hall. Because by law, you don't have to pay rent for something that isn't safe or isn't secure. Because you and me both know. The number one thing in this world, if you have a leaky-ass roof, mm. the, next thing that, the next thing that happens is mold. Yep. And once you hold in your home, an apartment, a house, the townhouse has to be condemned and restructured. Yeah, that's a fact. Right. Black mold will kill you. That's a yeah, fact. Come on. That's a fact. Then on top of that, you can get Legionnaire's disease. If you work somewhere and you have an ant expectation, I mean, an ant problem or a roach problem or a rodent problem, and a landlord does not provide extermination for that, then the landlord, you see, that's where the pandemic came. The pandemic came. It was a natural disaster, health scare. We do not have to pay rent. That's why so many landlords lost because by law, you don't have to pay rent. The same thing it is. This is why slumlords exist because the tenants do not complain. Yep. That's right. If that was the case, Tank, you would have hotel rooms that you go to stay in that have dead bodies in there. Whenever you pay to live, it's supposed to be clean, sanitary, and every place has a budget, access to a handyman, yeah. That's like every apartment complex or some neighborhoods have a lawn service. They, it's by state law they have to do that. Mm, that's a fact. Hence and the reason. sad part is a lot of times, and it's so sorry to say, a lot of these like single mom or, or you know, certain people where certain people live, they don't, they don't know they can just, they, they have a, a multi-million dollar case because you can't put, either the prime example, if the, the Department of Corrections, if city jails are held to a standard where, look at the prison, Peachman, Peachman Prison in fucking Mississippi. The number one thing was, was unsanitary. The mm. toilets didn't work. Then it was understaffing. That's why Jay-Z and them Rock Nation put that million-dollar lawsuit because it's unsanitary. No human is supposed to live in unsanitary conditions. That's a fact. Is it charging rent? Shit, and, and the state is paying for the prison. Right? Yeah. That's the crazy so, part. So, we all know this. Anybody that's a landlord or, or, or say, whether, you, whether it's a private home or, like you say, apartment complex, condominiums, you're in charge of all that. Mm-hmm. That's like when, remember this in Sunny Isles in Florida, when the, the, uh, that condominium community, it, it crashed because you, for years people saying, look, man, the garage has cracks in it. Something's going on with the underground parking. Then it crashed. Yep. The whole, that whole entire landlord apartment complex 
got sued for billions of dollars. Yeah, they had to pay that. Mm-hmm. They definitely like if we live, that. we live somewhere tank, and the plumbing doesn't work, and we make complaints. We live somewhere the dryer don't work. We live somewhere the motherfucking um, what's it called? The sink don't work. That's part of a landlord when you rent an apartment. That's what a landlord is supposed to do. Nah, that's a fact. You're paying. You all you doing is paying and lives there. They take care of all the motherfucking superficial shit. Yeah. Like I, I had a test. Prime, prime example. The motherfucking roof need to get done. You know what I told the landlord? Either you fix this, or I'm going through right down to city hall. Yeah. <laughs> Because that's part of being a landlord. You that's rent, right. you you own the property. You rent the property. You have to take care of the property. I'm just renting the space. Yeah, that's a fact. You see, a lot, a lot of times in this world, people don't realize that. No, 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 no. You you are a foolish person. You can't pay rent for somewhere that doesn't pass the everything. Right now, we go to McDonald's. Look, man, there was a dead mouse on the floor. McDonald's will get shut down. Yep. The health board. Yep. Anywhere where you sleep. Or they serve food or beverages. It is ha- a standard how clean they have to be. A lot of times we take that for granted. Nah, that's a fact. That is a fact because it, because it's one thing about our society. Our society is the biggest pimps. You know the rule. If you don't know, <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you. Right. Nah, that ain't their responsibility. It's your responsibility to know. That's the it's problem. The, that's the problem. The education. Motherfuckers don't educate themselves before they start nope. doing this bullshit. Anything, my anything mom, you do, you're supposed to know about it before you do it. Thanks. Come on. My mom was a coupon queen. We used to be in that checkout for She had a thousand coupons. Let that store not honor a coupon. The man is on the, <laughs> tell me about this. This is an expired for a week. Tell me, not, tell me why she's not reading up right. Yep. For policy, it's a coupon. You got to read it up right. That's a fact. That's a fact. All right, man. Well, we got to wrap it up. Hurry up. Yeah. You got to wrap this Educate. shit up. I'm starving. All means protect your family, take care of your family, because this world's going to come to shit. If your sister, brother, girlfriend, boyfriend don't know what's going on in life, school them. If you have a client that's foolish and don't know how to move right, tell them to watch the news. TMZ will tell you how to get. (laughs) Real shit. Real shit. Because at that point, safety is key, man. Safety is paramount. TMZ will tell you about it. Be like Pop Smoke. Pop Smoke could took $1,500. That's $500 per guard. Shift starts at ten over at six. Yep, he, yep. he's still been a lot. That's yep. a fact. That's a fact. Property security. That's right. We do that too, man. Listen up. Yep. Listen up. The man is is dropping jewels. If you got the money, if you got the money to rock it, and you got the money to wear it, you better have the money to protect it. All right. Thank you. It's another up. form of insurance, man. Says if not, you go hear a famous word. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Stay on your two right, P's and Q's. I love you. you out there, Killer J. Be safe, brother. All right. This video is in Korea. Leave them girls alone, boy. All right. Facts. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen. It's the only place you get all this information and these jewels we dropped on you tonight. Uh, share. Do all that bullshit. Hit the merch line. Um, and we're going to keep trying to bring you this content on the week as long as I am able and here. Um, so we'll close out like we do every night with all due honor and praise to the most high worship thee to the divine image of my wives. Amen. And good night.